Here's the bike that we are going to be converting into an electric bike. Some tools that you'll need to do this are going to be a crescent wrench, some type of cutting tool, and two Allen wrenches that will be used to remove the shifter and brakes. To begin, disconnect the brake line near the front forks. Next, take your Allen wrench and loosen up the shifter and brake and slide that off the handlebar. You'll need to remove the brake line from the brake that was just removed and repeat the same process on the other side of the bike. Now we're ready to put on the new brakes. Slide those on where they used to be and adjust the angle to where it's comfortable. Next we'll reconnect the front brake line from the old brakes. At this point in time we can reconnect the front brake line as well. As you see here, we're sliding the shifter back on, and then we're going to go through and re-tighten both the shifter and the brake back onto the handlebars. On the other side of the handlebar, slide the throttle in between the brake and the shifter and use the appropriate Allen wrench to tighten these down. The last thing we'll need to do is to reconnect the brake line. Rotate your handlebars to the far right and far left and make sure that there's enough slack in the brake line so that they won't get caught on anything. Flip the bike upside down and balance it on its seat and handlebar and begin by loosening the nuts that's holding in the rear tire. Once those are loose, be sure to disconnect the rear brake line so that you can slide the tire out. Move the chain out of the way and pull the tire straight back right in between the rear fork. Take the wheel hub motor and place it between your rear forks with the gears and wiring on the left hand side. You need to pull the wiring through the chain like so and place the wheel so that the bolt fits into the grooves in the rear fork. I want to show you the washer configuration for next to the gearing. So as you can see here, there's one washer to the right of the fork that's next to the bushing of the gearing. And then on the left hand side, there's the other washer that has the tab. And now when you tighten those through, you just want to make sure that tab goes into that groove that's allotted right there. On the right hand side, we've got the, both washers to the right of the fork, so this one you just go through and tighten it up. Hand tighten those nuts and then go through and give the tire a few spins and make sure that it rotates freely. Next we're going to remove the quick release pin to get the rear mount in place. Pull that quick release pin through, take your rear mount and place it like so. Now you'll take your quick release pin and put it right back through and tighten it up. To attach the mount to the side with the wiring, we're going to need to loosen the nut and feed the wiring back through there. And then feed the wiring through the eye of the mount itself and then slide the mount onto the bolt. Once that is complete, feed the wiring through the eye of the nut and hand tighten it once more. To attach to the other side of the rear mount, take off that nut and take the mount and attach it on to the bolt on the other side. And you'll go through and hand tighten this nut Make sure that the tire is aligned and that it spins freely, and then take the crescent wrench and tighten those rear nuts. The 
attaching the canvas bag in which the battery and controller sits in is a fairly easy task. There's going to be six Velcro straps that will wrap around the frame of the rear mount and we'll just go through and attach all six of those. The next step is going to be getting the wires from the hub motor into its 6-pin PCI connector. Um, you'll slide the wires in place and you should hear a snap, meaning that they'll, they'll be locked into place. Uh, here's a freeze frame of the correct configuration of wires. In the interest of time, we've already zip-tied the wiring along the frame of the bike and fed it into the canvas bag. Next we'll bring over the controller and begin connecting like wires. By that I mean connecting blue to blue, green to green, yellow to yellow for these individual wires. There's also going to be the 6-pin PCI connector and some 3-pin PCI connectors. Connect these and we'll move on from there. One thing to note is that these connections will only fit together one way so that there's no possible mishaps. Once those connections are made, the last thing to do is to connect the battery to the controller and then give it some throttle and see if the tire spins. 